Before we get into this huge topic, if you haven't seen the previous videos in regards to the gravity problem that I briefly highlighted, I suggest you check that one out before watching this one. The link is in the description. And we're going to talk about the major issues Starship needs to overcome in order to secure humanity's place amongst the stars. Hi, I'm Ohms and welcome to Ohms Law. So let's dive right in with a few disclaimers since we need to do these nowadays in order to have an intelligent debate in the comment section. And even with these in place, it's still tough. So the problems I'm highlighting here are just obstacles that SpaceX is gonna have to solve. It doesn't mean they won't solve them or that they're not working on them. They are simply issues I'm calling forward in order for us to have an intelligent debate. This is about getting to the red planet safely and colonizing it. No one wants to see a repeat of the space shuttle and Apollo programs whereby all of them ended up being defunded and extinct. We need the Mars base. We need a base on the moon. And so highlighting these issues makes the community more aware of how difficult it is to get to space. And on to the second disclaimer, I am a huge supporter and follower of SpaceX. Just because I highlight a problem here, that doesn't mean I don't think they're capable of solving it. Third disclaimer, I might mess up fuel and propellant, but I'll do my best not to. And if I reference any science fiction films as we go through this, it does not mean the information presented is not based on actual scientific facts. For those joining in, this is a hub for filmmakers, storytellers, and creators to access the latest tips and shortcuts to conveying their story. So we'll be exploring this from that angle. A last one I promise, I might say we instead of SpaceX or them sometimes, since SpaceX promotes Starship as being a vehicle for all mankind, I'm not someone who works there or does anything useful for them, so excuse me if I say we, I am talking about humanity as a whole, as we should when discussing space travel. With those out of the way, let's keep going. We're going to put the gravity problem on the side for now and talk about the immense hurdles SpaceX has to overcome, and honestly, after really doing a lot of research on this, it seems more and more unlikely that this is going to be the vehicle that's gonna take us to Mars. It might take cargo to Mars, which is mostly our topic for today, but I don't think given what we know from SpaceX and space travel that this will work the way it is being proposed. So what problems need to be solved? I'd like to remind everyone that we can't just send probes or spacecraft to Mars at any time. There are specific windows that happen almost every two years, so any failed attempt in any of the development phases of the Starship sets that goal further and further from us. So we're in 2021 and we still need to get the first Starship into space. Getting the Starship to space, and I'm not sure if they'll be able to do it without Super Heavy, will be very challenging to say the least. We need to test out vacuum engines, how Methalox behaves in zero-g, any leaks, issues, etc. On the ground, we need to be building and testing Super Heavy. We need to have several cryogenic and static fire tests. Essentially, the Super Heavy technology needs to speed up along with the manufacturing of the Raptor engine, which SpaceX hasn't even reached full efficiency yet. They're still testing out the engines, and as we saw with SN9, these engines are still nowhere near being perfect. Moreover, SpaceX has not yet perfected the transfer of propellant with the flip maneuver. So Super Heavy needs to then perform the hop tests at several altitudes, and these are probably going to have to be done out in the ocean by some point. So we need a platform there and a facility capable of building the booster there, as transferring it in the ocean has its own complications. Keeping the Super Heavy booster out in the ocean prevents the booster from having to land near the SpaceX facility on the ground and removes the problem with noise that Super Heavy is bound to produce. Afterwards, we need to get the Super Heavy to space and back down on a platform. I have to insist that this could possibly be the hardest part of this due to its size and the fact that SpaceX hasn't yet perfected the landing of its own boosters. It just lost one the other day after only 5 flights. This is still impressive but won't help SpaceX with its business plan. Again, this isn't me shitting on them, I'm just highlighting how difficult it is and that these systems must be extremely safe before we even consider using them on people. After that, we need to get the Starship and Super Heavy into space and then back down on a platform. Test out the heat shields on Earth with re-entry, which they haven't done properly yet, by the way, since these things keep blowing up. And I would just like to point out that we need to do all these within the next six months if we hope to reach Mars by 2030. So let's be gracious and say that SpaceX nails all of this before June which is impossible, even though the speed they're moving at right now is unmatched around the world. 
They could perform human rated trials by this point, but I think they'd need to parallel that with another very difficult task, and that's orbital refueling. So we have to get a starship and a tanker starship into space first, which has never been done, perform fast docking and safe propellant transfer in a zero-g environment, and this too has never been done before using SpaceX's technology. We would perhaps need to consider building a refueling station so that the propellant is just ready to go, and that way the starship isn't waiting around to be refueled. But this can definitely come in the future, although I think it is vital to solving the gravity issue, so keep this in mind. SpaceX would then need to get the Super Heavy to go back and forth anywhere between 4 to 6 times in order to transfer enough propellant into the Starship before we send it off to Mars. And they obviously need to do this several times before proving that the system is safe. We're not even done with the cargo part by the way, and I haven't even brought up the gravity problem. Oh don't worry, we're getting there. So if they could do this by the end of this year, which is just... I don't know then maybe they'll make the 2022 launch window. For now, things will just keep getting harder. So getting to Mars. I would just like to highlight that SpaceX hasn't even done this yet, and that getting to Mars is extremely difficult. Many missions have gone to Mars, but if you look at this chart, for every 9 successes almost, we have 4 failures. Now, this isn't to say that we haven't gotten better, but the lack of GPS on Mars and the communication delay of almost 26 minutes makes this a huge gamble every single time. The closest distance between Earth and Mars is 50 54.6 million kilometers and yes we're using the metric system since it's the most logical way of measuring things and viewers in the US, Liberia and Myanmar are just gonna have to get used to it. But even this proximity can't be traversed in such a manner. Since any rocket we send there needs to fire its thrusters at the start of the journey and basically cruise the whole way, the total distance ends up being something like half a billion miles. And since the planets are constantly moving, it needs to start the journey before the closest proximity in order to arrive just in time to match Mars's orbit. The United Arab Emirates probe traveled that distance going almost 120,000 kilometers per hour, and it took it almost six months to do this. I hope viewers are paying attention here as this will relate to our gravity problem later. Essentially, the Starship needs to reach these speeds in order to get to Mars in the same amount of time. And I'd like to remind the audience that the Starship would technically technically weigh over 100 tons, and by weight, yes, we are talking about the mass and not the gravitational interaction of the Earth, but the comparison here is meant to call attention to the amount of volume and mass in relation to speed that the Starship needs to have as it approaches the Martian atmosphere. UAE's probe HOPE does not have that much mass. In fact, it's around 1,350 kilograms, that's about 1.4 tons. So the Starship needs to get 71 times that mass at that speed in order to make it there by that same amount of time. And yes, we are still talking about cargo. In fact, it would need to do it faster or have more Starships going there at a given time in order to get us to Mars before the end of the decade. So let's imagine we lose the 2022 window, which is likely the case, we'd need to send many starships by 2024 in order to test out these technologies. We need to test out these technologies in deep space, the thrusters, the engines, do corrections and trajectories, there's a huge to-do list here. So the starship arrives to Mars. It should go without saying that if the vehicle is approaching the planet at 120,000 kilometers per hour, it's quite unlikely that it'll land successfully. I'm no rocket scientist, but allow me to dive into a bit of history here since it's incredibly important in realizing the gravity problem later and the dangers involved with the suicide dive. And this might get slightly convoluted, so I've left timestamps in the description, but don't skip if you don't know this information or if you're gonna comment without having some basic historical and scientific knowledge about getting to the red planet. The heaviest mission we've ever landed on Mars was Curiosity, which weighed in at one metric ton. When it entered the Martian atmosphere, it was going 22,000 kilometers per hour. At about 131 kilometers in altitude, the spacecraft fired its thrusters to adjust the trajectory as it approached the surface. After about 80 seconds of flight through the thin Martian atmosphere, the temperatures of the heat shield rose to 2,100 degrees Celsius. That's almost half the temperature of the sun, by the way. So yeah, the heat shields really need to work here in order to prevent melting. 
They were made with a special material called phenolic impregnated carbon ablator or PISA and it's the same material SpaceX uses for its Dragon capsules. Once it had slowed down its velocity to lower than 2700 kilometers per hour, the spacecraft deployed the largest parachute ever built for a mission to Mars, almost 16 meters across. This parachute could generate 29,000 kilograms of drag force, slowing it down even more. The suspension lines were made of Technora and Kevlar, which are pretty much the strongest and most heat resistant materials we know of. Then it jettisoned its parachute and used rocket engines to slow its descent even more. When it was close enough, Curiosity deployed a sky crane that lowered the rover down gently to the surface. So yeah, it took all of that to get a little bit over a ton of cargo on Mars. According to SpaceX, the Starship is supposed to be entering Mars at 27,000 km per hour and I don't know how they'll be able to do that since they need at least a speed of 80,000 km per hour in order for them to reach the planet in 6 months. These numbers may vary depending on when you launch the vehicle and the type of propellant used, but again, time is against us here. The longer it takes us to reach Mars, the more problematic the gravity issue becomes. And if we're talking just about cargo, delaying this process means delaying the production of propellant on Mars and thereby delaying human flight later on. I don't know why I can't find any information about the discrepancy between the speed Starship enters the atmosphere at and the speed it needs to travel from the Earth in order to get there under six months. Maybe you guys can help me out with that. The Hope probe, for example, had to fire its thrusters in the opposite direction and I think SpaceX would need to do the same in order to bring down the speed of the Starship to 27,000 km per hour. You can forget about parachuting a 100 ton Starship as that just doesn't work and the parachute, no matter what material you use with today's current technology, would be ripped to shreds and the sudden forces would also kill you. But we're just talking about cargo, which in this case won't survive either. In 2015, NASA actually tested parachuting three tons. Wow, three tons. Carrying a prototype vehicle on a balloon to an altitude of 36 kilometers. The vehicle then fired its solid rocket, carrying it to an altitude of 55 kilometers. As it was rocketing upward, it inflated its supersonic inflatable aerodynamic decelerator to a diameter of 6 meters, which then slowed it back down to 2,900 kilometers per hour. Unfortunately, its parachute failed to deploy properly, so it crashed into the Pacific Ocean. And that's just with 3 tons, so parachuting is out. One solution to this problem can be decelerating the Starship on its approach to Mars. Maybe carry more fuel, fire the rockets when the ship arrives at Mars, and cancel all that velocity. The problem here, of course, is that the more mass you have to carry to decelerate, the less mass you can actually land on the surface of Mars, posing a problem with SpaceX's business model of getting 100 tons to Mars at a single go. SpaceX's Starship is expected to use a propulsive landing. Because it's taking a more direct, faster path, the Starship will have to use the aerodynamic forces to slow its entry. It could use aerobraking, passing through the upper atmosphere several times to bleed off the velocity, and many spacecraft do this, but again, SpaceX has not tested this maneuver. Its heat tiles, what temperatures they'd actually measure while hitting the Martian atmosphere, and whether or not the Starship's design as this long tube thing would be able to withstand all these pressures, aerodynamic forces and speeds. The maximum forces the vehicle would experience during its descent would be around 5 Gs. That's five times the amount of gravity we experience on Earth. Hold on to that number as it will be a huge talking point in the gravity problem. I'm not saying this maneuver is impossible for cargo, it just needs a lot of testing on Mars in the Martian atmosphere. So basically, once SpaceX has crashed multiple vehicles in order to just test out a few things and get the cargo there, now they have to worry about the most important part of this mission. And I don't even know what year it is by now, but let's just say they had all this done by 2025. So making the propellant and relaunching the vehicle. This has never been done before, ever and doing it millions of kilometers from Earth will be extremely difficult, especially since it has to be all automated and done by machines. And if this doesn't work, this whole mission fails as the Starship does not have enough propellant to bring it back. So they need this to work and 
they need to prove the concept before sending people there. They need to refuel one of the starships just sitting around and get it to come back to Earth, which has never been done. And it has to also properly insert itself in orbit or land back on the ground, which again hasn't been done before. I don't know what direction they might choose here, but if SpaceX can't prove that they can get humans back, no one's going to Mars period. No government or agency or private company is going to put it upon itself to send people on a suicide mission to another planet. I know there's this whole culture online about it, but trust me, with how the world's economy is going and how the media will frame this, no one has the money even to do that. Not even Elon Musk. Again, if he can't get 100 tons to Mars on a single starship, this whole plan won't work financially. It'll bankrupt SpaceX before you know it. And let's be real, if this process does not happen several times over, no one is going to Mars. It took SpaceX several tests and demos before they could send people on Dragon. So if SpaceX manages to solve all these problems through multiple tests before going bankrupt, then yes, it is possible we'll be able to get humans to Mars by the end of this decade. So now we arrive at the real problem, which in reality would have been solved at this point in the process. The gravity problem and the human rated starship. And this video is now the longest video I've ever made. And the gravity issue seems to need an entire video on its own that also requires a lot of resources and supporting material. I'm gonna stop here for today. So a final disclaimer that there will be another video continuing this one. So please take that into consideration if you're commenting. And I hope to elaborate on this next time. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification notification button so that you don't miss an upload and I hope to see you guys next time with more content about space and as always thank you for watching